think the Albert guy got that one actually. Kamari, Yuna's gone. Where in Spira have you been? Huh? Yuna's been kidnapped by the Albed Sykes. In exchange for her safe return, they want the Aurochs to lose. What? If they're only Blitzball players, I doubt they'd do anything drastic. But we shouldn't take chances. Let's go get her. I'm going too. This'll be no problem. They're telling the Aurochs to throw the game, as if they needed to. I mean, how good a team can they be? Waka said the same thing. He'll take care of the game. We should go get Yuna. The Albed boat is in dock four. Let's go. Guys, that was a serious guarding fail there. I mean, come on, there was like two of you. And I think Lulu should have gone with them. And you guys let your summoner get kidnapped. That's poor. But yeah, as I was saying about Micah, in the Japanese dub, he kind of sounds very high-pitched and kind of weird when he's in Luka. But then uh, later on in the game, he kind of has a more kind of standard uh, old wise man type voice. But I don't know, it kind of struck me as a bit weird when I first played the the Japanese dub. So no sign of Orin, Yuna has been kidnapped, and they want the Besaid Aurochs to lose the game. So things are off to a bad start. We have a better version. Might as well use it. Okay, that's it. So I think this is the first um, first place where Owaka will actually be selling equipment that might be useful to you. And we'll check him out in a second. But there are some treasure chests as well to be found. There he is. And also you can see how massive the Ronsos can be. So Kimari is actually quite small compared to his other Ronso siblings. 600... And also, Kimari's uh, character development comes in kind of small bursts, and that was a little piece of it there, so you're going to get to see more of Kimari's growth as a, as a character a little bit later on. So you can see he's always been kind of treated as a, as, as a kind of inferior sibling by his fellow Ronsos. And you're going to see how Kimari grows as we progress further. So this might help him in the Blitzball game, actually. I'm joking, by the way. Just in case you think that's a factor, none of the Sphere Grid stats affect your Blitzball performance. Just so you know. I don't want to trick anyone by saying something like that. The stores in the stadium are closed during a tournament, but I'm always open for business. Always open for business. Okay. So, get some nice uh, equipment here. But they're not cheap for this stage of the game. They're fairly expensive. Um, what can we get? None of them. I mean, Poison Touch is not a bad weapon to get. But it's not really necessary. Slow Touch is a little bit more valuable. As you can see, it's, it's worth a bit more. But you don't particularly have to get any of these if you don't want to. Especially these. I mean, these are pretty useless. And, well, Kimari already has this. So the only ones you may be interested in are probably these two and depending on how much money you have you can feel free to to get them just so you know touch weapons have a 50 percent chance of afflicting the status effect that they have and as you've already seen poison is a is a fairly effective move so that takes a quarter of their hp or uh, generally anyway there's some fiends where it's different but it will take a quarter of their their max hp every time they do something and obviously slow touch will basically reduce the turns that they get by a factor of two. Okay, I'm going to continue. The people here are so into the game they don't even look at what they're buying. Gotta love Blitz, eh? Come on, man. That's not a good way to, to be a businessman. Seriously. Just tricking people. Okay, we're going to have some battles to do here and maybe I might be able to come back to Awaka once I'm done. Oh, what are they? 
ancient machina salvaged by the Abed. They are mostly vulnerable to lightning. Is there anything this woman doesn't know? Okay, so these guys 300 HP a pop, and unfortunately Tyler's can't really do too much damage. So once again, Lulu's going to have to be the star of the show here. So there you go, you can see they're not really doing too much. But they're not too difficult, because they only come in pairs. There you go, 4, 5, 3, easy. I guess if you want to, you could probably cast Cheer five times and you could probably take them out in two hits, but yeah, it's not worth it. Might need to throw the odd potion here, but other than that, it's not too big a deal. But what's sweet about these guys is they drop really good items for this stage of the game. Uh, an X potion, I believe, is a rare drop, so one eighth chance, and a high potion is a common drop. So you can actually just kind of hang out around here and farm, uh, farm these guys for X potions. And sometimes, if you're doing kind of individual challenges, then it might be useful to stick around here and um, gain some extra potions that are usually quite difficult and expensive to come by. You pansy. Okay. There's going to be a few more of these guys at least. See, what's nice about the early stage of the game is um, Kimari doesn't get too much damage, obviously, from the um, from the enemies. So when he uses Lancet, he can actually recover a decent amount of his HP. But he hasn't been attacked at all yet, so it doesn't really matter yet. So there you go, more high potions. And since they recover a thousand HP every time, they're nice and useful. <laughs> Come on guys, they have 300 HP. Terrible. Wait, no, there wasn't anything down the bottom. Just making sure there wasn't a treasure chest hidden around the corner. So yeah, if it's your first time playing through here, I, I mean, and if you want to Know, if you're worried about being underleveled or you're struggling with the game, then uh, feel free to, to hang around here for, for a little while and take out some of these guys. I think this is the final kind of mandatory battle, and then after this, um, you, you can kind of run around and there will appear as random encounters after this. It'd be nice if at least um, one of my characters could get an overdrive. What's up with these guys? <laughs> you see, by now, if you've learned haste, if you spend a bit more time doing random battles and you've learned haste, this is a good battle to just uh, give Lulu haste and just let her clean up, to be honest. Because once you get Lulu in haste, that, that kind of more than makes up for her low agility, and she can do some serious damage. The are dead. We're expecting us. There you go. There's that high evasion coming in. She at least managed to dodge one of them. There we go, that's the final one. Okay, so they haven't dropped any equipment. I don't know what the percentage rate of equipment drops is, but when they do drop equipment, they have some, uh, some elemental protection on them, which you might find useful for some of the later bosses. So. Uh, again, if you're sticking around here for, for high potions and X potions, you'll find yourself getting a lot of elemental protection as well, which is only a good thing. So it is definitely worth 
farming. The Aurochs are keeping the score tied with some excellent defense, folks. Ah, but the referee doesn't call the foul. Wack is taking a real beating out there. Huh! Still in there! He won't last. Waka's always like that. Ouch! Let's go. <laughs> that, that phrase could be taken in so many ways, it's unreal. But yes, I'll agree, Lulu is a bit of a bitch. Especially to Waka, anyway. I think Waka has a bit of that kind of inferior brother syndrome where kind of everything that, that Chapu was, Waka is not. So Lulu doesn't is not impressed by that. Um, so I think we can... I think they appear as random encounters if I go back to another area. I just want to quickly check if Waka is still available. Just so you guys can see as well. Because obviously you can... Uh, mess around here, save some gill, and then you can go back and buy the stuff you want to buy from Waka. There you go. So yeah, random encounters here. But because I don't want to level up too much, I'm not going to bother with them. I think for the movie version I already had haste and I was quite a bit more leveled up by the time I was here. I think he was in this area, right? Yeah, he's still there. So yeah, if you wanna, if you don't have enough money to buy his equipment, welcome to Awakas. If you don't have enough uh, stuff, then you can always kind of farm those guys and then come back for this kind of stuff. But I don't really need any of these. Poison touch is is not a bad move, but to be honest, early on, most of the fiends. I'm gonna buy it anyway. Just what the hell. Most of the fiends early on you can kill in one or two hits, so they're not really going to have much time for the poison to take effect, but why not? Okay, I'm done. I'm going to head straight for the, the next boss battle and flee any encounters that pop up. Actually, I think before I do that, let me complete... Um, I think there's another dock that I can get items from. And then... Oh shit, okay, it won't let me. Fair play. If for whatever reason you're struggling when you come here, you can... Um, there was a thunder spit. There was a thunder spear that was available for Kimari. And obviously that's going to help him do 1.5 times damage as well. So if you want to get through these guys a little bit more quickly, you can, uh, you can invest in that. And that will make farming a bit quicker as well. Before I save. Ah, yes. Finally, some HP for Lulu. She does not get that much HP, I have to say. If I do get HP spheres, I tend to use them for Yuna or Lulu anyway. Um, yeah, I'll head down to that strength mode because Kamala's HP is pretty decent at the moment. I'll head down to. Yeah, I'll head down to about here, and then I can keep going. Okay, now I'll save. Alright, let's do this. Watch Lulu's jump here, it's amazing. Let's go. Yeah, she disappeared, because I think they knew how stupid it would look if they showed Lulu jumping. So they just thought, let's just not have her in the scene. Hey, we 
can use this crane. Oh man, they made this boss battle way too easy. At least it, if they left you to kind of figure that out for yourself, that would have been nice. So he said we can use the crane, but you won't be able to activate it yet because there's no power in it. So I'll show you guys anyway because obviously your first thing is going to be to do this. Come on, move! It's probably out of power. Okay, so how do we get some power into it? A thunder spell sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, so don't bother trying to kill it because it's not going to work. I don't even know why it has a HP stat. It's kind of pointless because you can't damage it. So I don't know. Yeah, so you're going to have to use lightning three times in order to use the crane. Now, why do you want to use the crane? You don't have to use it. You can take this guy out, you know, normally. But 6,000 HP does take a while to, to deplete. And in that time, you'll probably waste a lot of items. So what happens is uh, if you use the crane, I think it takes... Don't quote me on this, but around 90%. Either it's 92.5, 92.75, it's something like that. So his HP is going to drop 5,000 very quickly once you use it. So feel free to attack, but basically the, the key to this battle is obviously the crane. Yeah, so it retaliates with Blind Ball, so Kimari's next attack is going to miss. And it's been cleverly named Oblitzerator. So see what they did there. So I'm just going to wait it out until um, Lulu's able to fire the crane up. So you can start to understand why haste is uh, very useful, especially in boss battles as well. So we still have to wait one more turn. Hold on. Shit, I already knew haste. Why did I act like I didn't know haste? Oh, my bad. I don't know why. Thank God I didn't go through like the entire recording session not realizing that. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Phew. It's one of those things that went straight over my head. It happens sometimes. Okay, let's wait and let Tylus use the crane. I have done way too many playthroughs of this game in a short space of time. This is the third one that I'm doing in the space of like two weeks, so <laughs> things are starting to become a blur. It's going to be nice to get into the post game. I have not done the post game for years. So that's going to be fun. Okay, so he has been severely crippled and he's one fire spell away from death. And I'm going to give it to him. Ooh. It's a very easy boss battle. There we go, not a whole load of APs to be honest. But we did get a Thunderball, which will probably come in useful for at least one boss battle. I hope you hurt them. A little. What is it? There were these all bed that saved my life when I first came to Spira. They took me on their ship, and even gave me food. I was kind of hoping that this was the same ship, but it's not. I wonder if they're all gone. What happened? Sin came up near us. I made it out okay, but I don't know what happened to their ship. Um, was there... Anyone called Sid on that ship? I don't know. They were all speaking that Albed language. I see. 
So who's Sid? He's my uncle, but I've never actually met him. Mm-hmm. Wait, so that means you're Albed too, Yuna? On my mother's side, yes. Sid is my mother's brother. He became distant after my mother married. But she told me to seek him out if I ever needed help. You're worried he was... Don't tell Waka about Yuna's lineage. The thing about Waka, he never had much love for the Albed. Whoa! I, I gotta tell Waka. I thought I told you not to tell Waka. The game! Oh! <laughs> Ty's such an annoying little shit sometimes. I gotta tell Waka. <laughs> 